usually don't have to use microphones because I'm pretty loud naturally, I've been told. Um, just while Dennis is getting this up. Um, this right here is a picture of our graduates from last year. Five beautiful young ladies, all different stories, different backgrounds, different reasons for being at St. Gerard campus, all with the same goal of graduating and having their children. So within these five young ladies, they are mother to six, two on the way. Two of them are married now. One is stationed in Texas with her husband who's in the military. Our other one who is pregnant um, and married is in the military but opting out to have her child. Uh, we have two more that are actually in real estate school and one who is in real estate school and at the tech center um, dual enrolled. She will be doing um, the esthetician program. So we're very proud of these ladies. Something that I hear often in the pro-life movement is what are you doing for the mothers? That's the argument we hear, right? All you care about is these babies, that's it. Once the babies are here, you do nothing. But like May said, we've all answered the call. We all have a specific role in this fight. Mine, however, the honor I have is being the executive director of St. Gerard Campus. So for those of you that are not familiar with St. Gerard Campus, we are a maternity home high school. We have a daycare on site for our mothers but we also have a pregnancy resource center. So we do do pregnancy tests for the community. We do sonograms, but one of our crown jewels is that we are offering support to mothers who have chosen life. One of our slogans is we support life, right? We support life, but we support the yes. If you were choosing to have this child, this community supports you. We will provide diapers, wipes, formula, all the invaluable gifts that these mothers need, cribs, car seats. And it's not just for the mothers who are choosing life, but it's also for the grandmothers who are supporting life. A lot of the time at St. Gerard campus, we get a call in the middle of the night. Um, yes, I get calls in the middle of the night. I am sure May does as well. Like she said, once you get into this, uh, the whole family's involved. Um, recently, I received a call from a DCF worker who knows me well, and it was a grandmother who had just gotten custody of all five of her grandchildren. She had nothing, nothing. So at St. Gerard campus, we were able to give her car seats, cribs, play pens, clothes. We were able to support this grandmother. This is what the joy of being at St. Gerard campus is. For those of you who, who know Miss Carol, her son, Ed, uh, Deacon, Ed Wolf, is a parishioner here. Miss Carol had the amazing ability of not letting you say no. When I was a student at St. Gerard campus over 20 years ago, Miss Carol never let me say no. She didn't understand that two years prior to being there, you have to understand St. Gerard campus, my first minute there was not my first introduction into motherhood. At 15, I was pregnant the first time. I was attending St. Joseph Academy in St. Augustine where I live um, and found myself pregnant my freshman year of high school. I was in an extremely abusive relationship. I had uh, initials carved on my back, uh, broken nose, all these things while attending a regular school just like regular girls and no one knew. So at 15, when I told my parents I was pregnant, the immediate response is, there's no way you can have this child. He will kill you. So instead of allowing me to die, they chose to take my child. So, excuse me, this is, wasn't a plan to talk about that, so I apologize for getting emotional. But when we were up here, we were talking about the significance of life. I thought it was imperative to tell you my story too. See, what we hear is that we have to be bold, we have to talk, we have to tell. There's an ownership in the testimony. So at 15 years old, my child was lost. May and I have talked about this. It's called the atonement. What happens is 97%, upwards of 97% of women who have an abortion will become pregnant again in two years. My atonement child is in the back of the room. My beautiful son, Logan. <laughs> He's actually in the Coast Guard now. Um, so that's my SGC story. So at 17, I was attending St. Joe and uh, got pregnant again. And my immediate response with all the 17-year-old attitude that most 17-year-olds have is, I'm having this baby and I'm going to St. Gerard campus. What do you say to that? You know, at, at that point, there were so many severed ties in my family. They didn't believe there was kind of any ability for me to get right. But they're just like, let her do what she's going to do. So at 17 years old, I met Miss Carol Wolf, who is, she's just a fire. She was a fire, she passed away last year. And she didn't let me say, no, you will have this baby. You will graduate. I will come and get you if I have to. You will show up and you will do it. So you say, yes, ma'am. 
That's what you learn with Miss Carol. So I did in fact graduate. I graduated with honors. I was able to go to nursing school. I met my husband, who is not my son's biological father, but he went on to adopt my son. I have since had three, uh, two more children. Logan is uh, married, and I'm the proud grandmother to two little boys as well. So when I tell you, I, that's something you should have. I'm very proud. It's an honor. It's an honor when you are called. I stepped into this role three years ago. And my goal was not to change anything, but to come alongside great men and women and and take my voice to the forefront and understand that I have a part in this too. So when we're talking about teen parents, I want you to understand that 70% of young women who are in high school who become pregnant will not finish their education, 70%. Within that 70%, 1% will go on to college. I'm not satisfied with that. So there's a a wonderful quote I came in contact with recently, and it said that if you educate a man, you educate a man, but if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. All the women say amen. Um, (laughs) And I can say things like that because all of my men in my house are not here. Um, No, but it's true. Right here on the screen, when you look at these young ladies, that's five lives. And sometimes in the role that we're in, it's a number game, right? We need more, we need more, we need more. But those five young ladies right there have the ability to now speak into eight lives. And like we were talking about, and I think it was Trudy who said, you know, think about if your grandfather had chosen to not have you, if they had chosen abortion, right? These mothers are choosing life. It's our job to support them in that. So at St. Gerard Canvas, they are able to finish their education. The housing is available if they need it. We transport them to all of their appointments. And now we have the amazing role, as Ms. Carol did for many, many years, of not allowing them to say no. And we're honored to do that. What I want you to understand is there's redemption in the story. When we're talking about our different roles, and if it is that you are an advocate on the street, if it is somebody that you're seeing a parishioner, a fellow parishioner in your church, meet them with kindness too. I understand we have to have boldness, it's significant. And I'm not even, I had a whole PowerPoint, but then the Holy Ghost just started moving, so we're going to (laughs) go. But something that was always so passionate to me, or passionate to see, was that Miss Carol was so bold in who she was, but she also had the ability to speak to your heart. And I think we have to be sensitive. We have to understand that this is our role, this is our calling, that it is our time to speak up as believers. And it's all with the understanding that each one of these lives, mothers and children, both included, are valuable. Valuable. So when Trudy talked about John 10.10, that's my favorite scripture, so I just love when God does that. When it says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I didn't know what abundant life could look like. That's what we're seeing at St. Gerard Campus now. It's not my graduating class that had 25 and we had you know, economically sound families and two-parent households. What we're seeing is girls coming out of sex trafficking. We're seeing young ladies who have been raising siblings that are 15 years old and they're the oldest of five and they have been home by themselves for months at a time taking care of children. Why are we surprised? Why are we surprised that this is happening? But our job is to empower, to educate, and to equip them so that when they leave St. Gerard campus, that they will be fully equipped to step into any role. My goal is to invest in them in such a way that they become an investor in our parishes, an investor in our community, that they can empower, that they can impact, that they can change the generational curses that they have had inflicted on them unknowingly. One thing I'll and I'll be quick. I mean, I'm sorry. I was like waiting for him to walk up here, like get the cha- you know, the, the old school, whatever that was, pulling him off the stage. Um, I was recently looking at a study because one of the big things we're developing right now is our mental health. What we're seeing is our girls are coming from significant trauma, significant trauma. And one of the things that they had said was there was a study out of Texas, and you'll have to excuse me, I can't remember the university, and they had taken male rats. And they had taken a beautiful smell, and I believe it was cherry blossoms, and they conditioned these male rats to be afraid of the smell. So what they would do is they would produce the smell and they would shock these rats. And so over time, this taught the male rats to be what? Afraid. They hated it. There was a fear that was a, a sense of, no, I don't want to be around that, right? So two generations of pups later, 
They've had no contact with the male rats at all that had had this initial training. Two generations. So their children's children. They started producing the smell of cherry blossom and there was an innate fear to that smell in these rats. What we have to understand is sometimes these young ladies have been forced into situations they were never supposed to be in. They are subject to environments and generations that they should have never been even part of that, gener that line. So I always think of Rahab in the Bible, one of my favorite women. See, I love reminding the girls of powerful women with awful stories. And Rahab was known as the lying harlot. What a great way to be looked at for all of eternity, a lying harlot. And we laugh about that at the school because I talk about how what God can do in your life if you decide to surrender to the call, if you decide to surrender to the walk, he can completely change you. Rahab was known as a prostitute. She was in fact a prostitute, a lying one at that. But we never know how she got into that. Was she sold into that situation? Was she forced into that situation? We don't know why she was in fact there, but we do know that in the middle of the night, there were men of God who came and her whole life changed because she surrendered to something different. And then she was ultimately in the bloodline of Christ. And we tell these girls, if you just surrender, look what God can do. I have the honor of being at St. Charles campus. I've been there for 20 plus years in some capacity doing advocacy, you know, anything that was asked of me, volunteering. And thankfully I am here in this role and I love it and it's an honor. But one of the great, greatest joys is that I get to honor my child who's lost every single day when I get to talk about choosing life. When I get to inspire other young women and say, you can do it and not allow them to say no anymore. That's what this is about. So I don't know your why. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why, if it's you've had an experience. I know a lot of our volunteers at St. Charles campus, campus are post-abortive. We honor those stories. We honor our children. And I'm asking you today to figure out why your why is and share that why, because God needs your why, and so does this community. Thank you so much for your time.